Hey there, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining me here tonight. Uh, we are continuing the Aurifil block of the month. We are actually finished with the quilt blocks, but now we're making a bunch of tiny quilt blocks to put in between the uh, sashing pieces for this. So we'll show you that again here soon. So thanks again for joining me here. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a times it's a time for us to relax and craft together. Uh, so let's get going on more of these blocks. We finished three of them last night. We got this guy, this guy, and uh, this one we finished last night. I'm hoping we can finish three more. So we have six so far. Let's see if we can make it to nine. All right. So here they are again. Uh, I am really liking this so far. So this again are going to be the basically the inset pieces to our block. So we've made these larger quilt blocks. So this is from the Aurifil block of the month. I've been seeing a lot of you guys finishing them up and they're just looking so cool. Uh, but we've made these very large sashing pieces to go around around our blocks like so all the way around. Really big pieces and then we are going to put uh, these smaller blocks that we're making now in between the big sashing pieces. So that's the plan. We need 20 of these total to go in all of the different different corners for this. Uh, and that is the process. So for fun, I mean, all this is elective. <laughs> I mean, uh, we could have just sewn these blocks together and been done. But I thought, eh, let's have a little bit more fun with it. Let's make it more, like, I, I always like learning new things and trying new things out. So uh, I drew up, uh, based on a lot of your guys' suggestions, uh, some of the most basic quilt blocks. And these are, a, a lot of these are used, like, to build other quilt blocks, too. Like, we can start putting that there, this here, and we can start getting, like, a star going. You know, a lot of these blocks you can put together and make bigger blocks. So I thought, why don't we go through what some of those are? I have not made all of these, so I thought it would be kind of fun. So we've done the half square triangle, uh, the flying geese, or the arrowhead unit, the four patch, the rail fence. Those are the ones we did last night. The four patch, the flying geese unit, and the rail fence. Uh, tonight, I'd like to make the log cabin one. And then I think the snowball one and um, maybe this bow tie one as well. And we're going to just kind of make it up as we go. All I know is that we're going to end up with four inch squares when they are in the quilt block. Uh, so I, all I have to think of is the math of four inches. So like if I divide the four inches in half, that's two inches. So I need a two inch strip. But we also have to add the seam allowance. So uh, for example, if I needed a strip like this, you know, divide it in half, uh, four and a half, it's two. So I need a two inch by four inch piece, but then I need to add the seam allowances. So that's a quarter inch on all the sides. So I need to add a half inch uh, to add a quarter inch on each side. So to do this piece, I ended up cutting a four and a half piece by a two and a half inch piece. So it's about figuring out the math without the seam allowances first and then adding the seam allowances on. So that's, that's kind of the process of my little sketches here. So I want to do this log cabin piece, this, this gray. Oh, I was thinking we could do gray in the middle, but now I'm thinking uh, uh, for this center piece, I might want it something else, and I might want these strips to be gray. Uh, typically with a log cabin, you have a light side and a dark side. So these two strips will be dark, and these two will be light, and then we'll have something in the middle. Uh, the reason I'm thinking... Like, originally I wanted the square in the middle, but what I'm thinking is that I'd like these gray ones, or these side ones, dark ones, to be gray. Because it's the gray that's what's going to touch our colorful um, sashing pieces. So none of the sashings have the gray in. So as much of the gray that can touch the sashing, the better. So if I put the gray in the center, then it's not going to touch the sashing at all. So I would like the two long pieces to be the gray. So this particular block, we need two colors. 
I'm using all, including the gray, or not including the gray, I'll need that on top of it, but I've been using all of the excess fabric from making the blocks. So we need a light and a, and, um, a middle piece, and we have the gray as well. So here's our gray. We'll need that, and let's see, let's, this is, you know, this is on top, I'm just kind of picking stuff. This is a light color, so we could use this for our light, and I mean, this is the, kind of the next one that's popping out at me. We could do this, or actually this purple would be really pretty. Ooh, this would be a really nice log cabin. Okay, I kind of like how this is looking. I'm trying to only use these pieces once in uh, um, these smaller blocks, because then uh, it'll bring in uh, the colors from all the all the different blocks. So, all right, let's do these three. I, I like this. All right, so first up we need a two and a half inch square. So we can figure that out. So remember, these are four inches. So if this is the, a strip is one inch, the middle is two inch, and then we got another one inch over here. So if the square is two inches in the middle, we got to add our seam allowance. So we need two and a half inches. So that's what we're looking for, a two and a half inch uh, square. Let's cut. And I don't think, um, I don't think I'll need to really press this. I just need an itty bitty square out of this. I am going to get, um, my little square, uh, ruler here. And this is looking square enough for what we need it for. So I think I'm just going to go in and get my two and a half inches. I'm going to just chop it out of this little corner here. I think there's nothing wrong with that. Let's just get it done. Nice center square here. All right. And then I'm probably going to not use this fabric anymore in the quilt, except for the back. I want to bring all these colors, um, back into the fold when we do the the back of the quilt here. All right, let me just, there we go. Now I can see your comments. Oh, hey, Jenny. Thanks for joining in. Oh, Lenore from Kenosha. Uh, thanks, you guys, for hopping in here again. All right, I lost my fabric. There we are. So for a log cabin, how a log cabin works is you start with a center, and then you do strips along the edge. So the first strip has to be the same size as the center. And then the next strip has to be the center plus a strip's width. And then so on, you just keep adding strips. So they're bigger and bigger. And again, these two, we want light color and these two, we want dark color. So our first, um, our first log cabin piece here needs to be uh, well, it'll be one inch by two inches when it's finished. So it needs to be cut to one and a half inches by two and a half. And then this one will be three inches when it's done. So that needs to be one and a half by three and a half. Okay. So if we need a three and a half inch and a two and a half inch, then we're up to six inches. So I need a six inch strip by one and a half inch at least. And then we can cross cut to get both of those sizes. So this looks pretty dang good right about here. Um, that, yeah, so this is a six and a half inch ruler. So we're plenty good. Yay, okay, happy about that. I'm going to grab a ruler here and we will trim this up. I have a little snippet at the bottom. Oh, that doesn't really matter. We're gonna have enough space. And you know what? This is actually even straight enough that I'm going to call it straight. I'm not going to, I'm not going to cut, cut it anymore. So I'm going to just chop off my one and a half inch strip and then we will cross cut our two other, our two pieces from here. One and a half. Now our gray pieces will still be one and a half inches wide, but they'll just be a little longer to circle around that block. All right, that guy's done. I'm putting all of the scraps, the large scraps in the basket and I'll, I'll use those later. All right, this is looking pretty square too. I mean, a lot of these we've just 
cut for the block, so they're, they're looking pretty decent. All right, we need a two and a half inch one. So let's do that first. Get my cutting glove on. I thought, Gina's saying, I thought log cabins were all the same width, just longer length. All the same width, just longer length. You could modify a log cabin. This is a pretty traditional log cabin with the, um, with everything just kind of the same. I moved a little bit on there, but I think we'll be fine. And then this one's got to be three and a half inches. Uh, but it's such a common block and it's so, there's so much you can play around with that I'm, that it would totally be viable to do a version of a log cabin where you change the widths of, of them. So you could like adjust it. But in general, uh, the log cabin is just thinking of a center and then the pieces going around and around it and they have to get bigger each time. So like this one goes here. So, you know, with the seam allowance, we're cutting it off there and then this one would be next. So we're just keeping on going around. So if we made this bigger, we would, uh, we would do the gray ones and then we'd come back up and do more light colored ones and then dark colored ones. That's not completely necessary for a log cabin either. You could just leave it the same and, or just, you know, switch every color and it would still be a log cabin. But in a traditional sense, a lot of times people do like the dark, the dark corner and then the light corner. You can really rearrange them on um, a quilt to make all sorts of different patterns. The jean quilt, if you guys remember my jean quilt that I made, that was all log cabin blocks. And just by moving them and, t and rotating them in different ways, you could give it just tons of different looks. It was, that was a fun project. I, I think log cabins are one of my favorite. I just like how they build on each other. All right, I think this looks like a decent spot. So, all right, what do we need here? Um, okay, so we actually need another three inch one or three and a half inch one for this piece. And then we go up to our fourth piece, our four inch one. So you will have that repeat. And then, you know, if we kept going, it would be another four inch one before we get larger. So, all right, so we need another three and a half. So a three inch and a four inch, but you add the seam allowance. So we need a three and a half and a four and a half. So that's eight inches. This should be plenty. I'm gonna just trim this and clean it up here. This is that fabric that it's kind of hard to find a spot to work in. So this one just came at me right away and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it. All right, so I'm just, trying to cut a straight line here. This is by far more than what I need, but I'll just keep it nearby. I, I suspect we'll need other little pieces like this later, like little chunks from the one and a half inch. So, all right, um, I'm pretty squished here. Let's, let's uh, do the double ruler method. So I'm gonna just move this to the one and a half inch mark. There we go. And I'm going to get my bigger ruler in and try to squish all this down. Oh, should put my glove on first. I think we're still okay. There we are. Okay, so let's cross cut this. I'm thinking again that this is looking pretty square, square enough. So I'm going to, I'm not going to trim off the end. I think we're okay. So I need a three and a half inch one. Oh, it's kind of hard to see, see through this ruler. All right, three and a half. And a four and a half, and then we should be ready to sew. We kind of did a pile of the easy ones first. I mean, these all of these blocks are relatively easy, but you know, like this one's taking some cutting. Some each of these are like you know 
different widths that we have to deal with. Okay, let's move some of these rulers. And uh, uh, I think we're ready. I'll save that piece for later. And uh, this is going to be a lot of starting and stopping. So we will sew the first piece on, press. So the next piece on, press. The next piece, press. And the next piece, and press. So we are going to take our time um, to just go through these and, and press them. So I'm going to get the mat out here already. We got the iron on. Let's let's put a dual workspace here right now. Okay, let's start sewing. All right, so I have the purple. Ooh, and now we got a matching scissors today. That's always fun. <laughs> All right, and let's put our first piece on. So I'm probably going to do a lot with these leaders and enders during this process. We're going to just jump around. All right, grabbing a leader and an ender so I can take this off the machine. This is my magic quilt that we're magically getting done while we work on other projects. But the purpose is so I can take off um, the piece that I'm working on off the machine easily with, without a ton of, ton of extra threads. All right, let's give it a press. I think we'll keep pressing outward. I think that's the typical way of doing it. This is gonna be pretty hot. Like I said, these log cabins are some of my favorites. Okay, so next up, we got our um, other, other uh, light colored piece. And we are just going to do this, go around and around. There we go. Get another leader in. one. <laughs> Jocelyn says, hello people that like to sew. <laughs> Love it. All right, it's coming together. Looking cute. Now our next piece, let's get in order again here. So we, we keep wanting to go around in a circle. So I don't want to put this piece here. I want to go with the short, longer, and then the um, this is the same length as this one, and then longest. You want to just keep kind of going around. Ooh, these are pretty together. I think this purple and uh, this gray is really nice. And then there's a little bit of gray in here too. I guess I don't really need to, this one doesn't really have a front and back, so. Didn't need to flip that one. Got in the motions, though. All right, grab our leader. One more, and this block will be done. There we go. And last up, I think this actually shrinks a little bit, this gray, when it gets hot. I don't know. This has been just, this gray has been just not my friend this entire <laughs> 
project. So it'll be good to be done with it, I suppose. Like, lesson learned, I should try and stick with uh, similar fabrics. Um, similar fabrics throughout the quilt. But I needed a, a gray, and I needed a lot of it. And uh, I found this in my stash. I'm using... I didn't get any new fabric for, for this project. It's all uh, stuff from my stash. So that's kind of a nice feeling. I, I call it, um, in my brain, it's slow motion recycling when I <laughs> am just using up the stash. Smells a little funny too when I press it, the, the fabric here. It doesn't smell like old or like it's burning, but I don't know. Smells like something. All right, so there's our log cabin. Yeah, I just feel like this is ending up like shrunken down. Oh, we're, we're close to our four and a half inches yet. All right, not as bad as what I was thinking, so that's good. All right, let's check it out. We got um, seven now, yeah, seven. This is fun. It's fun just trying out these um, these really kind of traditional blocks. And like I said, a lot of them I haven't done before, but the log cabin, I, I do that often. That's kind of my go-to block. I do really love that one. All right, let's cross it off. Log cabin done. So I kind of wanted to jump ahead to this snowball one. I think that one's going to be just nice and easy. And actually, I can probably use this for it. Well, it all, all depends. I could either do, I could do the dark square on the inside and then a light colored on the outside. That might be better because I was, I do want to go for mostly gray. So I think we're going to switch these colors around. I'm going to do a, a four and a half inch square for the uh, inside of the gray. And then I think, I don't know if these have to be any particular size. I think, I think the idea is just to kind of clip the corners with a square and um, then, then you got your snowball block. I don't, I don't think they have to be like, you know, one and a half inches or anything like that. But I think that's what I'm going to make them as. I'm going to just cut one and a half inch squares. That seems fine. I don't see anything wrong with that. So let's scooch these guys. I, I need to get a four and a half inch square for the center and I'm doing it in the gray. All right, I think I'm going to grab it right from here. It's the first place I saw and it looks like it's going to be easy. So this looks like a decent enough uh, square. <laughs> Normally I would trim this so it's perfect, but uh, I don't like dealing with this fabric. So let's do our four and a half inches. Like so, four and a half and a half. Great. I'm tempted to make this a hair bigger because I do feel like this is shrinking just a hair. I am going to make it. I'm going to just tish it out a little bit. We'll make it like four and a half plus an extra 32nd of an inch. Let's see if that works out for us. Oof, that felt crooked. It's kind of a weird, poor angle to be cutting with a rotary cutter. All right, scooch this out of the way. That little bit that I cut crooked, that can go away. All right, so here's our square, and now we need the little bits to go around. So let's just, um, I don't know, this is a pretty one. I kind of want to use that later. Let's use this green. Actually, here's some that are cut all easy peasy right away. What about a bright red? Let's do a bright red. Ooh, that's kind of bold. I don't think we've used any of these colors yet, so I think they're in play still. Oh, what about a blue? Let's do a blue. That'll feel kind of snowballish. All right, so let's cut four 
one and a half inch squares. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with one and a half inch squares. So what do we got here? We got, we'll, we'll have to cut two strips, it looks like. I'm just gonna trim, let's trim this edge. It doesn't look quite straight. And then I'll flip it around and, yeah, it's a little, little wobbly. I'll probably stack these to cut the other direction. Nice little scrappy scrap left over. Oh, this would be a good, nice thing to cut on the rotary cutter or the um, rotor, the rotating cutting mat. Let's cut a straight edge and then we'll cut two one and a half inch squares. Rotate that around. Then I don't have to flip any pieces and I don't have to move the fabric. One and a half. One and a half. Okie doke. So we are to the sewing. Yeah, we need four. So this is um this is for the snowball block. So you know, again, there's probably a zillion ways to do this. Uh, how I'm going to be doing it is I'm just going to put four squares or like a square in each corner. And these will probably move when I start sewing. But uh, then I'm going to actually sew on the diagonal and then we'll press it and we will just, it's basically just a square with, with some corners and it kind of makes almost like a circle in the middle uh, so I think I suspect that's why they call it a snowball block uh, but that's that's the plan so just a couple little itty bitty corners on here and I think that'll be pretty cute we could have made these like two inch squares that would have been fine I think the idea is just like clipping that corner a little bit with the with a snowball unit I think these will look pretty nice though all right let's sew them up so we'll actually, we'll do these one at a time. I'm gonna actually just take them off. I think they're gonna flop all over. So just the diagonal. So in theory, I should draw, uh, draw a line from here to there, but we're gonna do it like how we did last night, which is just wing it. I'm just gonna aim. So I'm gonna aim for this corner down here. So I'm actually gonna put the stiletto there and just kinda stitch towards it. I think um, my purple fabric, fabric is flexible enough that uh, if if I need to like get it right where I want it, I can stretch it a hair. I need another leader here. So I'm just gonna keep, I'm gonna stay here and sew them all on and then I will press them all at once and then I'll trim them. So I'm gonna stay right here. Oh, I didn't, I didn't aim all too well there. I'm a little off. A lot of that we can fix in the pressing, so I'm not, I'm not too worried. Let's get another one on here. Scooch down here. Okay, let's aim again. All right. Now 
next. So again, I think if you were doing a whole quilt of these, you would just chain piece it. Like I would do a whole pile of corner number one first on all of the blocks, and then I'd you know trim them and then do corner number two. You just go around, you, just, you do all of one corner first. Oops, I think I'm a little far over. And then you'd continue to the next one. But since I'm only doing one, it's a, oops, it's a little, little putzier. A lot more starting and stopping. Man, I feel like it's getting to be time to clean my space again. I have all this fabric laying here from this project, and I don't know, I'm feeling feeling crowded in, uh, in my little space here. All right, let's get this. Use this other leader. There we are. All right, so all we have to do now is uh, press these and trim. So uh, we are talking about this last night a little bit. Typically when people have blocks like this, they'll trim these off first. So they'll trim it to like the quarter inch seam allowance and then they'll press it. But I like pressing first be while this piece is still here because I can use this edge uh, to aim at so I can get my edges to line up and be nice and square and then I just kind of fold it back and then I trim uh, otherwise I'm just trying to like I'm just going without any guide this way it gives me gives me a little bit of a pressing guide so let's uh, give this a go press all the seams first and all right let's just go around here one at a time and actually I, I think it's a little easier if I Hold it with my fingers first. There, I'm trying to line up that edge. Then I'll get the iron in there. Get it just right. There, that's our first piece. This is going to be pretty. I'm going to like this one. Yeah, Jocelyn says it would be a, a plus to get the same kind of material because when you wash it, it's all going to shrink. Uh, at a different rate. So yeah, this might be, this might make the whole quilt get crazy, but I kind of actually don't mind too much when that happens. I mean, I haven't had that happen like a lot because I typically use pretty similar fabric. Uh, so yeah, this is going to be quite different than, than here. So this might've been a horrible idea from the get go, but I do kind of like when everything doesn't shrink totally perfectly the same way because then it poofs up a little bit. But yeah, I don't want it like super dramatically to be different. So I should have maybe done a little test before I started this project last year. <laughs> so we'll just see what happens. Because I do want to use it. Like I tend to use my quilts. Um, I don't have any like display quilts really. All right, that turned out cute. I'm happy with that. So now all we have to do is kind of fold back the corners that we just pressed. And now we get that quarter inch seam allowance in there. So I'm just trimming. Doesn't have to be perfect, so I'm just using the scissors. I think it's just faster and easier. Just don't cut that seam and don't cut off your front piece. And if you forget to do this, that's fine. It, it can be sewn into the quilt too. All right. Get those pieces out of the way. I think I'll give it one last little squish. This one wants to stay up. Well, 
All right, so there is the snowball black. I think it's kind of pretty with that blue. And uh, it's going to just be, I think I, I'm happy that we went with the gray because that's going to be uh, uh, like the eye-catching part of it, which is good because all the sashing is going to be so bright and patterny that it'll be nice just to have that gray in the center. All right, let's add it to the stack and cross it off our list here. Snowball. All right, so uh, you saw that I skipped a whole pile of them here. These ones all use half square triangles. So this unit that we did up here, um, all of these, these four just use a smaller version of that unit. So I thought I'd kind of do that all at once. So I'm gonna skip that tonight and um, we'll just do some more of these squarish ones. So over here, we got a couple, couple we could do. Um, I'm lo actually looking at the Irish chain here now. The Irish chain and the bow tie one here both look pretty easy. Yeah, I think we can do, actually, I think we can do this bow tie one with a lot of stuff that we already have. So we can use two of these two and a half inch squares like so. And then we just need two other, uh, or just one other color, so that, that would go here and here. But then those get just like a tiny little square uh, sewn to it. So it ends up looking like these two are connected a little bit, like so. Uh, so I, I wonder if one and a half inch squares are maybe even too big. Like, I wonder if they should be one inch squares, which would make them a bit smaller. I suppose it doesn't matter. Uh, let's cut out the two and a half inch first and then we can make that decision. So let's pick our next color. And this one is on top and popping out at me. And I think this would be a great, uh, we'll be able to see all of these fun flowers and stuff. I like it. So, all right, um, two and a half inch, two and a half inch. So that equals five inches. So I need at least a five inch area here. There's a lot left of this fabric, so I'm just gonna cut a strip here. Actually, do I need a whole strip? Maybe I'll just super fussy cut this. I'll, uh... I might even pretend this is square. It might be close enough. So let's grab the ruler. There you are, hiding. Oh, I suppose I could square that up. Eh, I kind of don't want to. Let's do two and a half inches by five. So yeah, I'll square it up. So I'm, I'm going to just cut this piece out. I only need about this much. Two and a half. And I'll square it up on the other way around. Gosh, done with that pretty nice big piece of fabric. That will go in the back of the quilt. All right, and now let's get our five inch by two and a half. And we'll just cut this in half and we'll have our pieces. That's a weird angle, so I was going extra slow there. All right, and then a uh, two and a half inch square out of here. And we have our two 
two and a half inch pieces. So right now, what it's going to look like we have is a is a nine patch, or not a nine patch, a four patch. So we'll have these. But before we sew them together, we need to add that one little bitty corner in here. And I think, I think I might want to make it one inches instead of instead of one and a half. So this, this piece is one and a half. So I'm just going to kind of peek at what it would look like. Um, so it would kind of get tucked in the corner here. So let's just kind of plop this on top so you don't see it. So it would be like so. And actually, it would be in the seam allowance a little bit more. So maybe it would actually be a little bit smaller. Yeah, you know what? I think that's probably right. Let's let's stick with the one and a half inch. And I already have it. So let's cut two squares out of here. Let's make it easy. How about that? Oh, this this is what it looks like uh, you're doing in the granny square quilt. This would be beautiful in the granny square quilt. I have some old, uh, like, I don't know, like, what is it, 50s reproduction fabric? Is that, I think 50s, maybe not, I don't know. Uh, but some of that, like, cute little baby reproduction fabric. And I just have, like, a whole thing of it, and that would be, just with white, would be so cute as a granny square quilt, I think. If it wasn't for going with uh, what the color of the year was, I, I might have gone that route. Okay, so we're going to take these two, and we're just going to, with right sides together, these, again, this doesn't really have a right and wrong side, I'm just going to sew on the diagonal for both of these. And then we'll press, and then we will have our four patch ready to put together. So this I can just chain piece, which is nice. Do the two of these. Again, I'm just kind of aiming. I'm not, I didn't mark the backs or anything. Okay, there's one. Two, and I'll get another leader. Snip that leader away, and we're ready to press. So same thing like I've been doing. I've been leaving leaving the, that piece there so I can aim. These are cute with these little itty bitties here. Itty bitty squares. All right. snip off that excess and we should be good to sew all these together. Okay, so now this one will go here and this one up here, and then it kind of creates this bow tie. Uh, it'll be cinched in a little bit more because we'll lose we'll lose um, the bit for the seam allowance. So I think it'll be they'll feel a little bit smaller. But I think that's the general block there. I, I don't think I've ever made one of these before, so I'm, I hope I'm doing this right. It seems to make sense. So uh, I'm gonna sew these two together, and these two I'm gonna actually sew them together the same way, and I'll press them the same way, and then I'm hoping we can nest nest those seams together. Alright. Line them all up. Yeah, 
I'm excited we're getting another three blocks done. We might have time to start or at least cut the pieces for the next one. That'd be cool too. Maybe we'll even get further. We'll see. and then we'll have our four patch ready to sew up. I'm gonna just I think I'll press them both in this direction. Oh it's a Sizzetto! <laughs> I was losing that's funny I was uh, using my my scissors as a little stiletto. Yeah it works. Sizzetto. <laughs> Okay, so I'm pressing them in the same direction uh, so that they're rotated the same way too, so that now when I rotate one this way, the seam will be going in the opposite direction, and then we should be able to nest our seams together so that this seam lines up really well. So let's just fold that up. Um, all right, so these seams should butt up against each other like so, and then we'll go down this seam. Trying to line it all up. All right, I'm in that seam now and I'm gonna line up the rest of it. We'll see how we did. I need some more leaders. Let's press and then we'll have another one done. So we're cruising today. Got some nice ones in here. Aw, this is sweet. I think this is just the right fabric, this kind of yellow floral fabric. There, I might even press this one open just because it's feeling like it wants to be like that. A little less bulky then as well. All right, well, that looks like what it's supposed to look like. I'm liking that. I think a bunch of these all in a row together would be awfully pretty. Like it just um, look like this kind of bubbling sort of diagonal. That's kind of neat. So, I mean, I would love to actually just do multiples of a single block and start putting them together and see what quilt it um, can end up looking like because, you know, I haven't really done that either. All right, that's uh, another one done. Let's cross it off. Okay, bow tie done. Next up... Well, I was thinking we would do another one that doesn't use any half square triangles because tomorrow we'll do half square triangle day. So I think the only one that we have left is this Irish chain. And uh, it looks, you know, this is another one I haven't really consciously made. So it looks like just a two and a half inch square. And I think we have a, one left here. So why don't we do gray for the inside of this one? So then these would be one inches, which would make them with a seam allowance one and a half. So these are four one and a half inch squares, probably in that gray again. And then these are two and a half inch by one and a half inch rectangles. All right, that seems easy enough, right? 
Then it's just like a nine patch. We're sewing um, three rows of three, and then we're sewing the columns together. Or the columns first, and then the rows. All right, let's cut. I need uh, four one and a half inch little bits. So that's four, five, six inches worth. Oh, my tools are in the way. All right, let's see. How big is this right here? That looks less than six inches. Oh, it's getting there though when we trim it off. This might be good. I might have like the perfect little strip right here. Okay, good. Let's, uh, I'm gonna trim it right from here. Uh -huh, I need the glove and the rotary cutter. I just wanna make sure that I got six inches. I don't get it till about right here. So I'm just gonna cut up here. Oh, I guess we'll do the double ruler method. I got a ruler right here. Let's use it. So I need one and a half. here fabric too much gray fabric all right so now I'm not even gonna trim this edge off because I think I have barely enough and a little fuzzle on there all right let's cut our four one and a half inch bits I'm just gonna do it one at a time here okay one Ooh, that did not feel Oh, good. We went up. We went through. Didn't feel like my rotary blade made it all the way through. Two. Three. And last one. Great little bitty scrap left that's what I like to see okay so now I need so these will go on the corners here so I need one and a half by two and a half inch strips and I need four of them so two four six eight nine ten so ten inches by one and a half and this guy's on top so why don't we use this lime crazy green here Ooh, this is a pretty good piece too. I think I'm just gonna cut a strip. Gosh, 10 inches is a lot more than this though. Um, you know what? I might just use this instead. So this, I might just be able to cross cut a couple here and I think that might be easier way of doing it. This is five inches though, that'd be good. One, two, three, four, five. It's right on the edge of being five inches. I might just call it five inches. Let's, I'm just doing it. It's a little shy, but I think we'll be able to manage. So I'm gonna cut two of these and then I need to just cut it in half and we'll have two, two and a half inch pieces. Just trying to find my glove, here we go. Yeah, I think we might be able to sew this one together yet too, so we'll get, four done today. That's great. So there's 20 total. We'll have to see what we have done today. And then tomorrow will be half square triangle day for sure. All right, let's, this would have been good to do on the cutting mat, but, or the, uh, the rotating one. I'm just going to stack them. best I can and we'll just cut them right down the center here all 
All right, that should be good enough, I think. Let's lay it out. So now this will be a nine patch, which means nine pieces. It's not a true nine patch where everything's, well, I don't know, true, but um, where all those squares are the exact same size. This is a weird little fuzzle on here. We'll have that go behind. But it's basically three rows and three columns. That's what we're working with. They're just a little different sizes. There. And there. All right, so I'm going to sew the first column together. So those two, then those two, then those two. Then I'll take them off the machine and sew the next ones on. Then we will press and then we'll sew the rows together. So I think um, maybe we'll just stay a hair longer and finish this up because it'd be nice to finish it. Then we can start fresh tomorrow with uh, half square triangles. I need to figure out a little bit yet the half square triangles how to how big to make the triangles <laughs> so I gotta do a little research on that beforehand so here's that middle row and the last row in the column First column, first and second column. All right, so now I'm going to take the first one off. And this is that row one. So I'm just going to open this up and put our next piece on. Then the middle piece. And the bottom piece. So then the, we'll have them all in order here yet and we'll, we'll take them off the machine, press, and then we'll have our little rows to sew together. Okay. So here's our row one, two, and three. So rows one and two or one and three, I'm going to press the same direction and let's, let's, um, let's press them inward. Maybe we'll press these inward and the, these, this one, the middle outward. So as long as we're doing each row, uh, opposite of each other. Then we can nest our seams together. And that's where we get in theory, all the seams to line up real nice. Oh, okay, so Lenora for the half square triangles, she's saying, I believe the formula is finish size plus seven eighths inch. Okay, if you want to add the full one inch, you can trim. That's true. That's true. Okay, I'm going to keep that in mind. Okay, good. That's that's exactly what I wanted to know. <laughs> I, it's always, you know, I know I can go bigger with half square triangles and trim down, but I always, like, question, oh, God, what's that formula? There's always... Because uh, triangles are goofy, because you're dealing with like that hypotenuse, right? So that's a that's a little bit longer and a little bit harder to figure out. But the nice thing with half square triangles, yeah, is that typically you can make them a hair bigger. So you can add the full inch or add a little extra, and then you can or, or always cut them down to size. Okay, those are inward. So this one I'm gonna press so the seam allowances go outward. this side and then this side oh 
Okay. So now our seam allowances are going in opposite direction and we should just be able to nest them together. I'm gonna, I'm, you know, this would be a great place to use clips, but I am gonna just try and sew it. So we'll, we'll do these. I'll need a leader and then I'll take it off right away. So the other side on, and then we'll be, just need to press it and be done. So this is great. We're getting four of them done. I like that. One more than yesterday. Not that that matters too much, but I am excited to get this quilt further. Even though I, I you know, I keep adding stuff to it. I, like I said, I didn't have to. <laughs> I didn't have to do this whole extra, you know, little project with this quilt, but I, you know, it just seemed, seemed like it might be kind of fun. All right, so that again, that was a rough sew right there, uh, in the sense that I'm, I, like, the gray pieces just felt totally different in size than the, than the, um, quilting weight fabric one, so. <laughs> I'm hoping that when I, uh, put these in the wash, it's not going to shrink like crazy. I'm going to have to like super duper quilt it or something, like do a ton of quilting so it holds it together. That's a thing, I think, hopefully. All right, so let's just kind of peek. Oh, not too bad. So this, this seam looks great. Like it's going right into the next scene, seam. This one is, is stair-stepping just the tiniest bit, but not too shabby. I'm, I'm not mad at that at all. Um, all right, so then this guy goes right here. I, I like working with these itty bitty blocks. They just kind of stay together. You can hold it in your hand. You don't have to pin everything and they're not flopping around everywhere. I do kind of like, like working on these baby blocks. It always feels weird. It's, it's, I mean, we, we work on a lot of small blocks in, in our, you know, previous projects here. So uh, working on really big ones always feels weird. All right now this one feels like it's fitting together a little bit better. All right, this is the last little bit for the night. Let's get it off the machine and press. Okay, so here we are. I don't remember which side I just did. <laughs> I think we just did this this one. And about the same. So not too bad. I'm I'm happy with that. So let's let's see what would be the easiest way to press. Let's let's do one side here first. And then get the other side. Aw, this one's so sweet. So the Irish chain. So I, I didn't know that that's what this was called. And I suspect, I'm looking at the picture now, we probably could have made the center a little bit bigger, but this will shrink down a little bit once we have it sewn in, into the quilt. So I think the proportions will actually be kind of nice. Yay, all right, let's let's uh, let's see what we got here now. I'm, I'll put it on the white table because I think that looks a bit nicer. So how many, I forgot how many we started with. Oh, before we get too far, let's let's cross that off the list. Otherwise, I won't remember. Okay. So let's see how many we have left here. So we have these four. These are all half square triangle ones. These are the ones I'm hoping to do tomorrow. At least at least three of them. Okay. And then we got a pile more half square triangles. Oh, these are actually some flying geese units up here. So that's a little bit different. Oh, we got this hourglass one. I got to remember how to do that. Ooh, this disappearing nine patch. I've not done this before, but I know about it. <laughs> Attic window. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine left, it looks like. Oh, and ten. One down here, too. So we should have ten here. That means 
going to scooch this out of the way too. All right, this one's the one that we just finished. Then that feller. This one we did last night. Where's our other one from tonight? Didn't we do four? One's hiding in here somewhere. Oh yeah, we did a log cabin one. Here we go. Oh, I like how that guy turned out. That's cute. All right, these are looking great. Oh, this is just be such a sweet quilt just like this. Like these all sewn together or with a little sashing. This would be just like the cutest little like baby quilt almost. Just some practice on the different blocks and make a cute little uh, piece like this. I I'm thinking this is looking great. I hope this looks good in the, the bigger picture here. Um, with that big sashing and stuff, but I'm really liking this a lot. They're really pretty, and it is reminiscent of the, you know, Aurifil block, too, that each of them has different colors in, in the block. I'm liking it. Cute little log cabin. All right, you guys, I'm really happy with how these turned out. They're just so sweet and little, and they are just some of the most basic quilt blocks. Uh, and oftentimes these are used in multiples, uh, like a bunch of these same ones, and the way you put it together kind of makes these new shapes that you wouldn't have even thought of. Uh, or you combine them, like, um, you know, this guy and this guy, all of a sudden you have like the start of a star or something. Uh, it's just how you combine them can just make whole new different things or you can keep them these small little these just builder blocks like what we're doing and they look perfectly nice just like this I think <laughs> all right so we're going to continue this is a free week uh the last week of the month we kind of just pick something uh like an unfinished project or some quick fun short project that we want to uh do or just like a new technique that we haven't tried before and we just want to give it a go uh this has been kind of a finish it up week uh where we're working on that orophil uh quilt just to finish up the rest of the top for for this so that involves 20 of these small squares in in our case and then we can lay out the whole quilt top and sew it together that won't happen this week but we're getting closer i can feel that we're getting closer to a finished uh quilt top which would be fabulous so awesome. Thank you guys so much. I know we went a little late here and I appreciate you sticking around. Uh, we will do all those half square triangle ones tomorrow. Those will be fun. I'm excited for those. All right. Have a great evening and good night.